When talking about Frank Ocean, there are many things you can focus on, from his anonymity to the importance of being an independent artist. Frank is a prime example of originality and creativeness in music. However, when discussing Frank's body of work, there's one element that usually goes overlooked depending on who you're talking to, and that is the element of nostalgia. And although you may think that it's not that big of a deal in terms of Frank's music, I think it's a fundamental part of what makes Frank Ocean, Frank Ocean. So the thing about music is that what we listen to is essentially a part of us. It's kind of like that thing where they say you are what you eat. The music you consume says a lot about the character of you as a person, even as it relates to the music that you hate, but especially the ones we love. Even when we grow to hate music, it speaks to how we change as people. Like I didn't always hate Skrillets, but now I do. So fuck them. And a big reason why I'm a fan of nostalgic songs is that it lets me think about a time in my life and the things that were happening around me. Like the first time I heard Mr. Rager in my biology class. Maybe it reminds me of playing 2K14 on the Xbox. Sometimes it's something as insignificant as playing Fortnite back in like 2018. Oh fuck! Shit! To a certain point, music helps you feel like you were in that moment, and that's why nostalgia and music go so well together. Like, you don't have to imagine the sounds that were happening because you have the sound right in front of you and it doesn't change. And although we change and the memories that we associate with those times have faded a little bit, the music hasn't. And they were a part of who we were, part of our lives, and that's why we associate the two with themselves. And if there's an artist that's aware of this, it's gotta be Frank Ocean. One thing to keep in mind is that there's more than one way to be nostalgic. Uh, there's many ways that a song or an artist can make you feel nostalgic and Frank Ocean has a lot of great examples. Let's start off with Endless, the forgotten Frank album. But it does have a great example of a track that uses nostalgia to its advantage. I'm referring to the second track on the album, At Your Best You Are Love. The first time I heard this track I knew it was special. It was a laid back dreamy performance from Frank and I remember feeling a sense of remembering. Like the track was calling back to something and then I realized that the reason why this song was able to sound like it wasn't made a couple of years ago is because it wasn't. Let me know, let me know. Aaliyah would release At Your Best You Are Love in August of 1994, so needless to say, the song was older than I expected. Especially because Aaliyah's version was also a cover of the Isley Brothers. Let me know. This does create a cool chain of covers while creating a sense of nostalgia, even if you didn't grow up listening to the other versions of the song, because it is reminiscent of a time in the past, and naturally the listener also starts thinking of the past. And when thinking about the past, it's really easy to just start daydreaming, you know? The album kicks off with the PlayStation intro from the original PlayStation alongside the sounds of Street Fighter, essentially showing you a part of his childhood, and for those who had a similar experience, the sound of those games are a thing that will take you back to sitting on the floor, booting up your console, and playing whatever game it was that you played throughout your childhood. Which makes all the sense in the world to throw in there if you're Frank Ocean, because most people can envision themselves in that situation and reminisce back to those days, while also getting an idea of who Frank Ocean is. And being that Channel Orange is meant to be an album where Frank Ocean looks back to the time in his life when he first fell in love, bound to produce nostalgia for those who felt the emotions that Frank looks back at, especially when you think about a track like Thinking About You. A tornado flew around my room before you came, excuse Cause I see that like the initial stages of a crush when the other person doesn't even know that you like them for real. It's really a youthful feeling or a childish feeling, however you want to look at it. Uh, but I don't think old people are going through these type of emotions. You know what I mean? Or at least I hope they don't. So when you put yourself in Frank Ocean's shoes, you're obviously not thinking about like the future, you're probably thinking about the past. And that's one of the ways that you can feel nostalgia through music and media in general. Cause love is one of those things where everybody has gone through it. Maybe not though. So maybe I'm wrong. 
Even Blonde carries its elements of nostalgia. Despite the album being mostly about heartbreak, I'd say most of the first half feels like people looking back. And when you have an album like that, it's no surprise that it has turned into a comfort album for a lot of people. And although most people don't associate being sad with nostalgia, there's definitely a fondness that you can gain from looking back at those memories. At least assuming that you're over it and you grew stronger because of it, you're really gonna look back at those times where you were sad and really appreciate them. And when you think about it, I think that's a major theme of Blonde. In Self Control, Frank speaks on whether a relationship would have worked out had they both grown up together or at least learned the same lesson. Wish I was there. Wish we grown up on the same In a track like Pink and White, the whole outro is somebody reminiscing on being a kid. Even Andre 3000 carries that theme in solo. He talks about being a kid in punishment, which I think is a very vivid detail as someone who was punished a lot during my childhood. Watching kids play while you're grounded is a fucked up experience. I am not gonna lie to you. There's also the whole element of like Blonde is a nostalgic album for a lot of people because it came out in 2016 and 2016 is apparently the peak of life for everyone. When talking about the elements of nostalgia and Frank Ghost's discography and how that fits into it, there's one project that puts all of those elements together, and that's Frank Ocean's Nostalgia Ultra. Go to my house after school. For those who don't know, Nostalgia Ultra is the mixtape that made people recognize the name Frank Ocean. The project is essentially an album, and according to Frank, it is an album. He just had to put it out as a mixtape for like legal reasons. But anyways, as you can guess by the title of the album, Nostalgia Ultra relies heavily on nostalgia. Ow, ow. A song like There Will Be Tears talks mostly about Frank's childhood without his dad. But also, the song serves as a tribute to Frank's grandfather, who was the only father figure he had growing up. My granddaddy was a player. And I think songs like these are really important for those people who have gone through this same experience being able to relate and being able to connect with somebody who has passed on. At least in my opinion, I feel like it's important. Elsewhere on the album, there's songs like American Wedding, where they're not necessarily about nostalgia, at least lyrically, but because the songs being sampled are so recognizable, I feel like we already have memories tied into these songs, even as a first listen. It's an American wedding. And the song that I feel like best exemplifies the idea of nostalgia and music, and especially as it relates to Frank Ocean, is Strawberry Swing. When we were kids, we had the song samples heavily from Coldplay's Strawberry Swing, but Frank uses his Strawberry Swing as a representation of what it means to be a kid. It's this idea that you're new to the world, there's colors you still haven't seen, which is a crazy thing now that I think about it, like imagine seeing a color you've never seen before. Anyways, you're discovering new places that life presents, you're meeting new people, and the funness of being a kid playing in the playground, drawing strawberries on the swing, really enjoy it for that reason. Every moment was so However, as the track carries on, we realize that the reason why Frank is reminiscing is because he is about to die. I've loved the, good times, yeah. the world is burning and there wasn't room for everybody, and these are the memories that he chooses to reminisce on. The track starts to fade away, symbolizing the end before an alarm clock goes off. This most likely represents that like the track was a dream or whatever, but I also think that the alarm clock is there for another reason. Often nostalgia can lead to daydream, and I think that alarm clock is there as a way for Frank to say that regardless of how fun it can be to look back at the times, that isn't real life. There's new memories to be made and more stories to be told in the future, and maybe when we look back, we'll also be nostalgic for today. We might never be kids again. We might never experience love for the first time again, but we also aren't going to live through this time that we're currently living in again. And that's the thing about nostalgia. Although it is fun to look back on, you should never think things will never be as good as they once were. Because honestly, at the end of the day, that's up to you. Anyways, um, 
shout out to Frank, shout out to Frank, um, shout out to Jay Dilla. I'm um, gonna let the outro roll and and shout out to y'all because yeah, y'all went crazy on that last video. Um, but yeah.